There should be really four things you should consider if you're using a digital camera. Set your mode dial. If you want to have total on adulterated control, I should, I should remember that. You want to have total control of your camera. Hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm Charles Abels, local photographer in and around the Prescott Valley area. I hope you enjoy my presentation. Hello there, and welcome to another episode where today, let's talk exposure. I know in the past I said we'll discuss that a little bit, but first, before we do anything, I would like to take a few moments and show you my ritual. Yesterday morning when I got to work, there was a sight or a composition that caught my eyes with me. I had this Panasonic Lumix G85. It's a small little camera, but it's pretty wicked. And this was a camera that I use. And what I'm going to briefly do here is tell you the ritual that I had used while I was sitting in the car in preparation of taking this photograph as I went walking to the to the lobby at work so I can start work. First thing I want done is on most cameras such as this Panasonic, Canon, Nikon, Sony, they have what's called a, a mode dial. On the mode dial you have several features you could choose. Now I go to M. M is representative or M means manual mode. Now what does manual mode mean? It's reminiscence of the old film cameras where you plug in all the information you want and today it's digitally now. You don't buy a roll of film, you don't mechanically change uh, your aperture, you don't mechanically change your shutter speed when you get ready to take a photograph. Everything is done in this camera. It's a, it's a little powerful computer you might say. So the M manual mode is the first thing I set. Then I looked out at the light. It wasn't completely dark, but it wasn't completely light. It was fundamentally described, I could best describe it as all shadows. But I believe I set my, my ISO, I should say, I set my ISO at 800. And then the next step that I did was I set up my aperture. Now ordinarily, low light, I generally set my, my aperture pretty much wide open. This time I decided to completely shut it down to f22. The shutter speed was a guesstimate. So I believe I set it up at, uh, to uh, 1, 125 of a second, and then I got out and then I work toward my composition of what I wanted. And right here is the picture that I took yesterday morning. Now, that is fundamentally my ritual with, with digital cameras. All right, let's talk about exposure. What you see here now is a drawing that I did on my computer of the exposure triangle. This is pretty standard and it's fundamentally what I use. Now I'm not going to tell you that the way that I'm telling you how I do it is the right way, but it works for me. 
when you're photographing, you constantly have to have your mind going. You have to look at the scene that you're wanting to photograph. You have to consider what you're doing. And then you can go and use the triangle. But first, before you go to that, let me remind you that with a digital camera on your mode dial, you need to make certain that the first thing that you do is you set this up to manual. That is what allows you to take control, total unadulterated control of your little computer, of your camera, to get the desired photograph that you want. I know, pretty awesome, isn't it? But that's where it's fun because you could do a lot of things in the manual mode. Now I'm not going to take away from the rest of the neat little features on the mode dial. So once you set your mode dial to manual, the first thing that you need to determine is what ISO you want to use. ISO is your sensor's sensitivity. With the cameras of today, you can adjust that ISO given any circumstances that you're ready to photograph in. So, generally, during the daylight hours, I'll have my camera set to Oh, I've had it set anywhere between 100 to 1600 ISO. It depends on where I'm at. If I'm like in downtown Prescott where all the shadow is, I may go to 1600, 800. If I'm out in the open, I'll go to 400. It just depends on where I'm at, what I want, and what I'm doing. It's at night or low light for me. That's remarkable. I can amp up, ramp up the ISO and I found for most of my low light shooting ISO of 3200 to 6400 covers pretty much everything but you have to remember it's all dependent upon the availability of light or what you can pull for light so here the first step or the first thing you should consider is what's your ISO, what's the ISO you wish to use? The next thing to consider, and again, I like to reiterate the, 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 the steps in which I am telling you is it's my steps that I use. Because the next step in the triangle, you need to determine if, you know, you got to develop your own sync with photography. Do I want to set the shutter speed or do I want to set the aperture? Personally, I set the aperture first. The aperture, well, frankly, between aperture and shutter speed, the aperture, to me, is a wonderful tool within any of the cameras, film cameras or digital cameras. It's, it's remarkable what you can do with the aperture. The aperture, you're primarily controlling your depth of field. When you utilize the aperture, if you don't need the background or you don't want the background and you want to focus on the subject, say as in a portrait shot, say your girlfriend, you want to take a picture of your girlfriend, you don't care about the buildings behind you, you want to focus how beautiful she is, then you would set your aperture, I would, you know, I would say wide open, but you know, starting with uh, say f2.8, f2.8 I should say, and then you would adjust your shutter speed accordingly. And generally, when you have your lens wide open, and this is not concrete either, you can adjust if you wish, but everything in the background will be blurry with the exception of her, your girlfriend, or boyfriend. I mean, you know, it could be a young lady taking pictures in the manual. Because one thing I forgot to mention with the wide open aperture, you would use that, say, in the dark. So now you not only consider your ASA or ISO high, you open up your aperture, you're now allowing more light in, which means opening up your aperture also helps out in low light settings. Now we get into the fun part. Let's say, for instance, you're in the streets. Generally, I found for me, F8 works well in the streets for street photography. 
I'll even go as far to say even in a low light setting f8 works out just fine. By the same token consideration of the depth of field you set your depth of field say to f22 this is a great setting for a couple of things. One, it's a great setting for landscape photography. You're not wanting to focus on something nearby. You want to get the grand view of the landscape. Now, one of the things to consider for F22 is as it gets smaller, it means it's not letting a lot of light pass through. So that means what you have to consider when doing this is your shutter speed. You could use that to your advantage as well, not only to get a phenomenal landscape shot, but I have gotten lightning shots in the daylight when I've set it down to f22 and the reason why I did it was I wanted to slow down the shutter speed in order to try and grab a lightning strike. You could take that and use that as your advantage. Phenomenal. So let me let me recap the aperture. The aperture's main thing is depth of field. That's what it controls, is your depth of field. So if you want to focus on, say, your subject, you open it up to, say, f2.8, and when you photograph it, you'll notice that everything in the background is blurred. And the exception is, is the subject that you focused on. And that's as it should be, especially with portrait photography. Landscape is you dial it all the way down, it slows the shutter speed. In other words, because it's not allowing all that light into there, into this sensor or film, you have to slow the shutter speed down to the right exposure to get it all in there. What this does is this creates your depth of field of distance or landscape. Very remarkable. Generally for me the shutter speed is the last thing I consider. Shutter speed is motion. Now you have to determine what do you want to capture when you photograph. If you're capturing a runner, do you want to capture him when he's mid-stride, tack sharp, beautifully focused? And the background, tack sharp as well. Or do you want to capture him as a blur or the background as a blur with him as tack sharp as you can get, you can do this with shutter speed, with your shutter speed. You could leave your shutter speed open. Working together with, with the ISO, your aperture fully wide open, you could slow down your shutter speed to grab, say, a meteor, a meteor shower, the Milky Way, the stars. There are other tricks to consider for astrophotography, but you can do that as well. You slow down your shutter speed for low light photography, say in downtown Prescott or Prescott Valley here. So shutter speed and aperture could complement each other and work with each other if you wanted to. More often than not, whatever aperture you decide you want to do with your depth of field or if you're shooting outdoors in the uh, low light environment shutter speed is secondary where you just adjust accordingly to get the best exposure that you want but you could do tricks of the trades a whole host of trick of the trades just go out there and have fun and and use it so manual mode ISO aperture shutter speed now, what I would like to do is take a few moments. I did show you photographs as I was talking about this as examples. What I would like to do is show you the rest of my... I just got online and built, pulled out my archive library and such and show you some of my favorite pictures with all of these things considered. The exposure triangle. We'll be back.
hope you enjoyed those other photographs that I shared with you. But I'm going to close this out. Look at this, eh? Got this yesterday. I won it on a bid from eBay. And I'm going to open it up and share it with you right now. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at this. This is a Leica Tela Elmer. F stop a 1.4, 135 lens. This will complete the collection of lenses that I have for my Leica film camera and my Leica M digital. Look at this beauty. Oh yeah. We won't go into too much detail with this. I of course have to set it up and try it out before I do that. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Don't, for, don't forget to subscribe down below. There's that button down there yonder. I would encourage that if you are considering using the manual mode on your digital cameras and or film camera because what's great is you can marry it up. I mean, I have like a camera film, but I have one Leica M digital camera and it's like I could set the film camera down and pick up the digital M and it's no different. The only difference is one's film one has a sensor on it. I would encourage you to visit sites, other sites, to get a little basics. What I talked about today is, is really extremely basic and I hope it helps people understand a little bit more about what exposures, especially when I talk to you about film cameras. So, don't forget to subscribe down below and until next time, we'll catch you later. Yeah.